there is any uh, any uh, tools around like uh, wheelchair any walking aids the child is having hearing aids uh, no uh, any other like for walking support no no, no child is able to walk no other supports uh, okay and then uh, i will uh, check for uh, dy dysmorphism and uh, then i will uh, uh, start uh, i will uh, do the inspection of the uh, uh, that i will do later i will uh, uh, examine start examination from the hand after general look sure, so if there, there is anything uh, on uh, nails pay, uh, coilonychia uh, clubbing uh, no colonic and no clapping. Mm, okay, then I will check he, uh, his hands, uh, his fingers. Any extra digit? No extra digits. Any abnormality of hand? No. Palmer paler? No pallor. Then I will check his pulse. Pulse um, is not is the... normal. Normal. Oh, okay. okay, then I will. Uh, I will um, ask for the BP, but I will check that later at the end. Uh, and then uh, I will come to the face and uh, I have uh, seen the facial features and I will check for the oral hygiene. The oral hygiene you maintain. Okay, and I will uh, do the OFC or ask the examiner for the OFC. Yeah, the OFC is uh, on the 10th center. Mm, okay. Uh, then I have also checked the uh, uh, neck, and I will also look for the lymph nodes, submental, submandibular, posterior, auricular, um, occipital, all the lymph node groups. No, uh, normal, no okay. lymphadenopathy. Okay. Then I will uh, ex uh, expose, uh, ask for the exposure of the uh, chest. And I will do examination of the chest from up sideways and from the foot end. And I will uh, uh, count the respiratory rate. The respiratory rate is uh, 28 per minute. Uh, okay. And then I will uh, see on inspection any visible pulsation, any scar mark? No visible mm -hmm. pulsation, but there is a scar mark as you can see in the muscle view there. On the chest, there is a scar mark. Over the chest, there is no scar mark. Okay, no scar mark. Uh, then I will uh, do uh, check the apex beat. Uh, where is it located? Yeah, it is located in the left uh, fifth intercostal space at the mid clavicular line. Mm. <clears throat> uh, I want to uh, I want to uh, check uh, for trachea, but as there is a uh, uh, bandage, so mm, still I can do that. Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, once once bandage is taken out, okay, it, it is looking like this, okay. So there is a right side, yeah. third picture, yeah. So uh, it will be okay, or it is painful if uh, I check for the trachea, tracheal deviation. Yeah, you can just do the inspection. No need to call it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Take okay. So and... after. Uh, after palpation, I will do. Uh, I will also just uh, check the uh, chest expansion. Is it equal on both sides? Yes, it is equal on both sides. Okay, then I will uh, do the percussion. Uh, both sides of the chest, uh, and I will compare both sides. Uh, is the percussion okay? Yeah, percussion normal resonant note on both sides. Okay, on anterior side and laterally. Then I will auscultate the uh, front. Um, uh, the supraclavicular and uh, three areas on front uh, and uh, two on lateral side. Is there anything on auscultation? Normal vesicular patterns are both sides. Okay, then I will uh, check uh, the vocal fremitus. Is uh, okay. normal. Okay, then I will uh, make the child uh, sit and uh, do the same maneuvers on the back, the first inspection. And uh, uh, how, uh, and I will check for the spine. Uh, is the spine okay? Yeah, the spine is okay. Okay, and then I will uh, do the um, percussion and uh, chest, uh, chest expansion, percussion, and then auscultation, and then vocal frame it is. Normal. 
Okay. Then uh, also I will check for the rickety rosary on front. Any deformity in the on the front of the chest. Uh, there's a kind of uh, more mild Harrison sulcus. So uh, okay. Uh, also then I will uh, do the I will check the uh, edema, sacral edema, and the pedal edema, and uh, also I will uh, inspect the skin of uh, lower limbs. Normal. Um, okay, and I will ask for the height and weight uh, of the child. They are on the uh, height is on the tenth centile, weight is on the mm -hmm. second centile. Okay. Okay, your time and, is up. Uh, okay. Can you just summarize? Uh, yes, I have uh, examined uh, uh, a seven year old uh, who has uh, uh, some uh, dysmorphic features uh, in the form of uh, 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 small uh, retracted chin, epicanthal, uh, epicanthal fold, depressed nasal bridge, uh, hypertilorism, and low set rudimentary ears and uh, protruded tongue. Also, he he has uh, uh, he is he's having hearing aid and coloboma of the iris, and uh, his OFC uh, uh, and height is on uh, below the tenth centile and weight is uh, below second centile. And uh, uh, also, there is on inspection of the chest there is a Harrison sulcus, and rest of the examination is unremarkable. Okay, so what is your diagnosis? Uh, um, according to my uh, examination, it seems to be Porter sequence. So why you are saying that? Uh, and also I forgot about the tracheostomy mark mm, because uh, the features uh, are like this. It has uh, this uh, um, small chin and uh, but uh, uh, I I don't know how to uh, yes uh, it um, according to the facial features it seems like a, a portal sequence. No. Okay, so tell me how do you manage this child? Um, uh, I will uh, uh, I will uh, involve a multidisciplinary uh, team uh, like. Uh, uh, um, uh, ge geneticist, uh, a pediatrician, and uh, yeah. a physiotherapist. Yeah. Okay. And also so, the um, ophthalmologist and the uh, ENT specialist. So and why geneticist? Geneticist, why? Uh, uh, as uh, it uh, it can be a, a genetic disorder, like uh, it's a syndrome. So. Okay. All right. All right, and uh, is there any uh, uh, special issue in the neonatal period? Uh, sorry? What is the main issue in the neonatal period for this child? Uh, it, uh, it is because of the oligohydromnios. Okay. Uh, can be because of oligohydromnios and can be... Uh, uh, congenital. Okay. All right. So your time is up. Let us discuss. Okay. So now others, uh, guys, when when mock is going on, please don't write. You know, uh, differential diagnosis. I like diagnosis in the chat box so that it will disturb. Isn't it? Now you are allowed to do it. Okay. So tell me, who's, who's going to? So what was the case? <laughs> Golden heart. Richard syndrome. <laughs> yeah, golden heart can be Hello? possibility. Yes. Can can be a Robin also. Okay, yes. So Jerry it's Robin. And and yes, yeah, small and 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 this one. Yeah, and micro micro vectoral, vectoral. Yes. vectoral. Mm, okay. Vectoral, because there is a scar in Texas to me, probably the child has gone for the Having the coronal atresia and operated for that, maybe. Okay. But most likely the charge, most likely, because the eyes have the <laughs> problem. 
Okay, so golden heart, child syndrome, Perry Rabin, anything else? Trichin Collin. Yes, very good. So this is the Trichin Collin syndrome. Okay, so tell me what are the features of Trichin Collin syndrome? <clears throat> Hypertelorism. Yes. You can see there, like you can see there, like you know, both zygomatic as well as the mandibular, mandibular bone hypoplasia. So kind of uh, let's show you this Micrognesia. Yeah, retrogatia, microgatia, okay, hypertelorism. Loss load set ear. Low set mul low set malformed ears. Isn't it? Ear, yes. Ear dominant. Yeah, it is autosomal dominant. Very good. Corneal atresia and microtia. Okay, micro microsia. So microsia is that like bilateral, you can see. Uh, small ears. Low set and small ears, isn't it? <clears throat> okay, they have hearing loss. Uh, there can be clap palate, clap clip. Okay, most common problem in the neurotal period is uh, airway, you know, airway difficulties. So they might need a uh, tracheostomy. Okay. Mode of inheritance is because of the it is autosomal dominant. And uh, so how do you follow these children? Basically, for what purpose you are supposed to follow them? Basically, for the vision assessment, hearing assessment, feeding difficulties, okay, and uh, speech therapy, psychosocial therapy. The management part, you have to say it is a multidisciplinary team, definitely. So your team members include uh, pediatrician, GP, community pediatrician, ophthalmologist, ENT surgeon, plastic surgeon may be required, genetist, definitely. Salt, speech and language therapy is important. Probably. Okay. School eyes. So ESCP, physiotherapy, occupation therapy. So all these are needed, isn't it? So this Richard Collins syndrome, and colon syndrome, sometimes you may get okay, in the exam. Okay, I will just say one, yeah, just a minute. So these are the features. <clears throat> the colob so iris coloboma and uh, clinical features, zygomatic and mandibular bone hypoplasia. Eyelid coloboma can be there. Sparse eyelashes, micro retrogatia, corneal atresia, microsia, conductive hearing loss, clap palate, clap clip, airway difficulties. So the thing about this child is they have normal intelligence. Okay. So inheritance pattern is autosomal dominant. So you need to follow up for this, all these things, okay? All right, guys. <clears throat> Poland syndrome, okay. what are the components of what are the components of Poland syndrome? Especially respiratory system, okay. So uh, these cases like Tisha Collin and Poland syndrome can come, but mainly you'll get cystic fibrosis. Uh, uh, maybe long-term asthma, child, primary ciliary dyskinesia, that is uh, maybe you get cartagenous syndrome, okay? So, but less likely we may get these cases. So, what are the components of the Poland syndrome? Clinical features of the uh, Poland syndrome? <clears throat> Other components? No, no, no. Uh, Poland, Poland syndrome. Oh. It will be no, pectoral muscle. Pectoral. Yeah, pectoral major muscle, one side muscle, are, like you know. So it is underdeveloped. It is absent. So that is asymmetry, asymmetry on examination. Okay. So then. So there can be syndactyly, polydactyly. There could be dextrocardia. 
So all those things can be there. Okay. So management always any syndromic child, you have to say it is a multidisciplinary team approach. Okay. All right. Okay. So let us go to video station. Can you see the screen? Yes, sir. So who is going to do this case, this video station? So do you know how to like, you know, go about a video station? So again, we have nine minutes here. So before nine minutes start, like we have that in between three to four minutes for the preparation. So you have to make notes from that stem. Okay. Then you need to watch this video at least two times. Okay. Uh, and uh, then comes the discussion part that is six minutes. So how we are going to present here. So you need to see, I could see so and so age old child, boy or girl. So in the setting up home or hospital, you have to say. So then general observation, we always uh, look up the child, well looking, looking how mentation, nutrition status, any syndromic features are there, any supports in the surrounding. So if the child is attached to the pulse oximeter, vitals, you have to tell. Any clinical findings, signs on examination. Then general examination, local examination findings, if any, okay. so. So this is how you have to present once examiner asks you to present, okay? So after that, typical questions will be there. I'll come to that, okay? So who is going to do this, uh, this station? Can I do so? Yeah, sure, no problem. Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll just play the video also. Okay, yeah, now you can see. Okay. You want to see it again? Uh, I think enough. Enough. Okay. All right. So, could you please okay. present your case? Yeah. Can I present? Yes. Yes. Uh, I can see a six six and a half month old infant. He is, uh, I think, in the home setup, lying on the bed, and he uh, suddenly uh, abnormal movements in the form of. Initially extension and then suddenly it is a flexion of the especially both arms. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do not see any attachment of uh, oxygen or any other thing. Okay. 
So, so on, the, on the behalf of these findings, uh, yes, most probably this inf infantile spasm. Any other difference? Why you are saying this is infantile spasm? Uh, because uh, certainly uh, uh, left arms. Sorry, okay, your voice is uh, getting interrupted in between. Yeah, say it again. Uh, because there is a suddenly uh, extension and flexion of the arms. Okay, okay, all right. Can I add you? Yes. Yes, yes. So, My differential diagnosis will be, uh, can be uh, okay. Your voice is breaking in between. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, am I able now? Yes. Uh, so it can be an infantile colic, or a third one it will be large, at least uh, this uh, myoclonic jerk, but it's very down, Yani. Hmm. Okay. What additional history you would like to take here? Uh, I have a history uh, onset, course, and duration, and any history of development, development regression. Then mm -hmm. any history of uh, uh, neuroca neurocutaneous uh, uh, signs. Mm -hmm. Then I will take history also, uh, maybe generalized, generalized seizures also. Okay. Then uh, I will take birth history. Is there any significant? Uh, I will take uh, birth history. Is there any significant? Mm -hmm. So, or, so in birth history, uh, basically, what what history you would like to load? What detail is underlying detail is you would like to load in the birth history? Uh, any birth history or any intracranial mm -hmm. hemorrhage? Okay. So. What clinic? What additional clinical examination you would like to do in this child? Uh, I will do a neurological examination, uh, especially this development, and uh, I will do complete uh, neurological examination. Okay, so you said infantile spasm as a diagnosis, as a provisional diagnosis. So, what are the differences diagnosis again? Can you just tell uh, us? Uh, second one will be uh, infantile colic, and mm -hmm. uh, third one will be myoclonic jerk because suddenly there's uh, movements. So these are different diagnoses. Okay, so what investigation? How will you confirm the diagnosis? Uh, I will do uh, EEG. Mm -hmm. Then I will do also MRI brain. Okay, what are what are you expecting in the EEG? EEG, there will be uh, hip arrhythmias. Hip arrhythmia, okay. So, yeah, what do you mean by hip arrhythmia? Uh, there is uh, 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 it will be uh, sudden jerks, spikes, and wave. Is an easy finding you have to say? Sorry. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. So, why MRI is needed? MRI, maybe uh, it is related to tuberous sclerosis, so maybe any intracranial uh, tumor. That's why I will do. Hmm. Okay. All right. And uh, so, what do you mean by West syndrome? What is the difference between infantile spasm and West syndrome? Uh, in, 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 West, in West syndrome, there is infantile spasm plus uh, neurological uh, yeah, developmental regression. What is a triad there? Right, sorry, okay. I, uh, no problem. How do you manage this side? Uh, I will here. I will involve multidisciplinary team, uh, pediatrician, then uh, neurologist, uh, as well as a. Uh, uh, maybe he needs uh, later on. He needs physiotherapist, and 
uh, he need uh, some new maybe neurosurgeon if there's a uh, intracranial pathology okay so what treatment uh, are you what treatment you would like to advise for this child uh, uh, there will be uh, I think Vagra veteran, and uh, I think first will be SCTH and steroid, and then Vagra veteran. Hmm. Okay. So, how how what is the outlook of this condition? Any prognosis of uh, this condition? Uh, progress will be. Sorry, I did not read okay. recently. No, no, no problem. <clears throat> No problem. Okay. So, Dr. Riaz, uh, first of all, I appreciate for your participation. And second thing, you did uh, Thank your, you. your, yeah, you did your best. Okay. So, the diagnosis is correct and uh, difference diagnosis is also correct. So, additional history examination part. Very good. All right. So, yeah. Uh, I, I we can you both have so. so and differential with can both some differ here. Sorry? Can you repeat the question? Well, can both some differ here in the differential? Yes. Yes, Sandifer infantile. I forget it totally. Yes, yeah. yes. Sandifer disease, infantile colic, okay. Exaggerated uh, startle yeah. reflex, moral reflex, you can quote, okay. Sandifer disease in. Okay. I think I think Sandy for it it will occur after uh, yani during eating during eating. Yeah. yeah so here so can we put as a least like you know lower down you can keep but Caesar one kind of Caesar myoclonic Caesar, Caesar you can uh, you can tell no issue. Okay. And uh, uh, myoclonic I put it already. Yeah. So yes. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. And the tried, uh, it is uh, hip arrhythmia on EEG, um, uh, infantile spasm, and uh, regression. Oh, okay. perfect. Perfect, perfect. So, Thank you. What, okay. what do you mean by hip arrhythmia? Who is going to tell me? There are three futures. So, what are the three futures? Multifocal uh, points. High voltage asynchronous. Hello? Yeah, yeah. Multifocal. Yeah. Multifocal. Synchronous. Shouting, yeah. shout, shouting of uh, waves and spikes. Uh, it's a kind of, okay, I'll just show you here. So we should say uh, infantile spasm or West syndrome in this case. Uh, infantile spasm, we can say. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, um, you don't know. Okay, so once you do easy everything, once you are sure about the easy changes and uh, regression is there, then then you can you can say it is a West syndrome. Okay, so yeah, hip arrhythmia. And sir, what about prognosis? Yeah, I'll I will come to that first. I finish this. Okay. So EEG changes are like you know, uh, they are generalized, like you know, they are chaotic. Chaotic, they are like you know, spike and waves will get in all the areas. They are chaotic. Okay. And they are high voltage. Okay, so these are the features. Okay. So prognosis, yeah. So coming to your question, prognosis. Uh, if the neurological examination is normal, uh, uh, if there is no regression, if there is no underlying structural abnormality, prognosis is good. So most of the infantile spasm, they stop by five, four to five years. Okay. And uh, yes. if there is any underlying problem, like genetic problem or like a structural problem, then prognosis is, uh, uh, is uh, like, you know, poor, you can say. Hmm. Yeah. 
Okay. Yes. Just a minute. Oh. Okay, guys, see what additional history would like to take here, like onset course duration. That's very important. Detailed birth history is important. You need to load perinatal estrogia, genetic mutations like tuberous sclerosis, in bone error of metabolism, in detail, developmental history, any investigation done, treatment taken for the same condition, you would like to take that history. What additional clinical examination you would like to do in the question is asked, complete neurological examination, including developmental assessment and skin also you can add, yeah. Okay, so... Uh, what is the likely diagnosis? You have to say it is an infantile spasm. Differential diagnosis could be infantile colic, GRD, benign neonatal sleep myoclonus, excessive startle, moro reflex, or maybe any kind of seizure also you can say. So these are the differential diagnosis. So West syndrome is a triad of infantile spasm, regression, and typical EEG features. Okay? What investigation you would like to carry out is you have to say EEG and MRI brain. So how do you manage this child? Definitely multidisciplinary team approach. Okay, the treatment includes, uh, uh, the, the drugs include with Viga battery and steroids. Outlook, it is good and the underlying structural abnormality is not there. So usually 50% of children, they will stop. So, but this in future, they can continue as a uh, other kind of seizures, okay? All right. So, just a minute. All right. So, who's going to do? Next case. <clears throat> Exam going students not there. No one is there. Those are not there. Dr. Yasser is there. He is exam going. Where is he? Please come on, guys. It's very easy. Okay, we can make mistakes here. So, Dr. Rehana also. Who is that? Dr. Rehana. Yeah, please come forward, guys. It's very simple, easy. And this was uh, actually, this has, this has come in the last. Please uh, try to mute yourself, guys. Please, it's background noise is very much disturbing for, for all of us. Okay, okay, Mr. Raj, I will do. No problem. Yeah, if nobody yeah, else. Oh, great. So you, you guys are welcome. Dr. Yasir, you, you would like to do it? Yes, I can do it. Sure. Okay. Special procedure. Ah. Just keep going, guys. Okay. <laughs> All right. So in the exams, nobody is going to give like, you know, answers like this. Okay. You will be alone there. So uh, your uh, doctor actually your time starts three minutes for your watching video and making notes whatever like you know okay. 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 So Ready? I have seen. Yeah, sure. Okay. So can you present? Okay. So I have seen a newborn baby and most likely in a hospital setting uh, with having uh, uh, 
this uh, card um, this uh, probe with the uh, cardiac monitor with the patch on the right side of the chest with uh, having uh, uh, opening of the left eye and uh, with the deviation of the mouth to the right side uh, with loss of angle uh, uh, nasolabial fold on the left side Mm -hmm. and uh, he is okay. unable to open his right eye. Okay. So, what is uh, what is your uh, diagnosis here? So, it could be a case of uh, uh, left-sided uh, patient palsy, lower motor neuron type. Uh, it could be a case of uh, um, uh, absence angularis oculi muscle. Uh, it could be a case of a Mobius syndrome. It could be a case of trauma, non-accidental injury. And it could be a case of uh, otitis media. Very good. So how do you differentiate between upper motor neuron lesion and lower motor neuron lesion facial non-injury? Sorry, your voice is, uh, Dr. Raj is very low. Can you repeat? Yeah. How do you differentiate upper motor and lower motor neuron facial palsy? Yeah, so because here uh, the there is opening of the eyelid, um, uh, this, uh, on the um, uh, actually we have to see in the lower motor uh, only this loss of nasolabial fold, uh, but in upper motor, in, uh, sorry, in upper motor neuron there is a loss of uh, uh, nasolabial fold only, uh, but in lower motor there is a loss of uh, uh, frontal froing opening or unable to open the eye and also so these are the two features that are favored towards the um, uh, okay. lower motor data. Okay. okay so what additional history you would like to take here so i will ask about the onset of the symptoms uh, uh, course um, and duration and uh, then i will ask about any history of fever any history of ear discharge any history of trauma um, any history of uh, uh, um, uh, antenatal history of any infection to the mother uh, and any history of uh, bleeding disorder uh, and any history of non-accidental injury. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what additional neurological examination you, you want to do here? So I want to do the neurological examination, uh, especially seven nerve and then all the cranial nerve and uh, then I want to do ENT examination to see the ear for any vesicle, any discharge. Um, and then I will um, uh, palpate the anterior fontanel, examine the skull for any bulging of the fontanel, for any intradulot, intracranial bleed, or any infection. And um, uh, then uh, also I will take vitals and uh, I will see his uh, heart rate and blood pressure and temperature. And then I will also uh, do the neurological examination of the uh, all the four limbs to see is there any deficit either this is isolated lesion or there is uh, also involvement of other part of the body okay all right so how do you manage this child so um, i will uh, um, uh, i will uh, I take vitals and after that I will maintain airway breathing circulation. Uh, then I will uh, see either this is Bell's palsy. Most likely it looks like a Bell's palsy. So I will start of uh, steroids uh, uh, within uh, 72 hours. Uh, and then I will also, uh, if there are vesicle, I will start the oral acyclovir and uh, then physio uh, refer to physiotherapist. Uh, and uh, then I will um, uh, do, uh, I will follow after one week. If it is not improved, then maybe I need uh, magnetic resonance imaging of the brain. Okay, all right. And eye care so, involving giving the uh, lubricants to the eye and patch at night time, close the eye. So uh, these are my measures. Okay, so what is the prognosis? Yeah, prognosis is excellent. 
so most of the child uh, will recover only few will not recover and have some loss uh, some deficit okay uh, till what time uh, you can tell the child like you know parents that uh, so this will recover all these things will recover so you can wait till what time up to 3 month so if not improving what you can do what you have to do then we have to do the mri and then we have to find out the cause of uh, any tumor um, any history of uh, uh, other pathologies uh, most likely tumors and uh, infections that like lyme disease so then accordingly we have to uh, our divert our management but basically we have to do mri and we have to refer the neurologist so they will see for the guiding for the plan Okay, your time is up. So, Doctor, I said I really appreciate. Uh, so, you are done well. Mm, you got out of what man? Six out of six. Okay, good. Well done. Only thing is, you got confused with uh, upper motor and lower motor uh, facial parts, isn't it? <laughs> no, no, I know, but um, the description <laughs> is uh, difficult to that one. So, yeah. Yeah, I think so, he described he cannot open his right eyes. Actually, it's opposite. He cannot close left eyes. He described. Yeah, so basically, in lower motor uh, facial palsy, the one half of the face is involved. Okay, upper motor is uh, like you know, upper half is uh, you know spared. Only lower half is involved, isn't it? It is because of the bilateral representation, isn't it? Uh, Doctor, yes, sorry. Uh, can you repeat DD of this again? Yeah, differential diagnosis. Uh, we can say, uh, uh, like you were telling, like you know, it's a lower motor facial palsy. It's okay, Bell's palsy. Uh, but uh, the underlying causes could be many. You don't have to tell those underlying causes for the Bell's palsy. You know, so trauma, the severe infection. You know, don't have to say that. So you just say Bell's palsy. Then other differential diagnosis could include, uh, yeah, uh, congenital absence of angular oris muscle. Okay. However, here eye closure is not possible, and uh, yeah, so this they can say, and the child will be uh, other speech, speech feeding, and uh, the the speech is not affected. Okay, uh, all those things you can say. Then Mobi syndrome, yeah. So along with seventh cranial nerve, so you have sixth cranial nerve normal also. Yeah, yeah. Six and seven, yeah. So if you say this much is more than enough, you'll get out of it. Okay. Yeah, management uh, part. Sorry, doctor. Please. Angular oculis or angular oris? Angular oris, I said, I think. Okay, it's angular oh, oris. Okay. Oris. Yeah, oris, oris. Not oculis. Okay. Uh, and the management, is there any role of steroid here? Like in Bell's palsy, uh, we give steroid if it will arrive within three days. So, is there any role here? Yes, your pediatric guidelines, peace guideline bedside. Okay, so it says that if the baby is brought within 72 hours of the onset of the facial palsy, you have to start prednisolone 1 mg per kg. You have to give it. And if there Perfectly. is no improvement within four weeks, then MRI brain. Yes, you are right. Okay, I wanted to come to that. Okay, so you have to wait till four weeks of the, you know, uh, after illness, like after this uh, episode. So if there is nothing improvement, you then you go for the further, like, you know, work of and MRI brain and pediatric neurologist, maybe neurosurgeon or hematologist also might be involved. You don't know, depending upon the underlying cause, you need to further dig up the, you know, etiology. Okay. And usually this neonatal part, like, so usually they get better by ease of the one year, 95% of the babies. So, yeah, this is a pro, like kind of prognosis you can say. And uh, management definitely have to say it is a multidisciplinary team and the team members all, as rightly you said, all those things involved. But physiotherapy is very, very important. So, yeah, if the physiotherapy doesn't work by three months, okay, uh, then they will consider for surgery, neurosurgical intervention, okay, a plastic surgical intervention. Okay, I hope if I'm not wrong. Okay, so this is how you have to tell. I think so, also if there is a situation with uh, herpes, we have to give a cyclovir. I don't know. I yeah, yeah, to yeah. See this. Yes. If there yes, is yes. any in the air, in the air, if there is any skin rash or like that, herpes, uh, yes, we have I to agree. give I a cyclovir. 
I totally agree. Okay. So yeah, I totally agree with you. So what additional history here, sir, if you ask, uh, if you, okay, onset course duration, feeding difficulties, skin rash, all those things, trauma, the bleeding tendency and lumps, bumps in the body. Okay. About the detail, birth history in order to roll out any, uh, you know, traumatic birth injury, especially forceps injury, anything is there you need to check. And uh, so uh, about the, after that, yeah, so uh, like feeding is stay sleep and all those things, weight gain, all those things you have to ask. And uh, what clinical examination you would like to do, complete neurological examination, including all the cranial nerves you have to say, including up eye as well as ears, uh, as skin. And uh, you have to say about the blood pressure measurement and uh, look for, looking for hepatosplenomegaly, lymph nodes. So all these things you have to say. What additional clinical examination uh, you want to do? So this is how we have to say. Okay. So diagnosis, differential diagnosis we discuss and management part of multidisciplinary, multidisciplinary. So steroids, uh, cyclovir, SOS and... Uh, uh, opt uh, urgent ophthalmological reference. Uh, so ENT evaluation... Okay, maybe needed then. Uh, uh, yeah, follow up, regular follow up. Physiotherapy is very important. Uh, if the older child speech language therapy might be you know, uh, required, isn't it? Am I clear? Yes, yes, yes. Sir. Okay, so this is how you can like you know the same thing whatever we are discussed till now. So management part is okay. So if the, all the history examination part is unremarkable, no other neurological signs and symptoms, no investigation needed. This is the first thing. If there is any difficulty in closing eyes, ophthalmological referral, uh, maybe I, I trust maybe it might be needed just to prevent uh, you know uh, exposure keratitis. So bilateral facial palsy you might uh, get in Lyme's disease with GBS, brainstem pathology, okay, uh, diabetes mellitus in. Uh, older children and adults. So further, like, you know, neurology and uh, uh, neurosurgery might be required depending upon underlying etiology. If there is a recurrent facial palsy, you need to discuss with senior. Recurrent infection is there, but try to rule out any immunodeficiency, like HIV. If there is any severe pain associated with the varicella zoster, so immediately, okay, if there is any difficulty, uh, provide eye patch, Carbomer ointment and vesicles present, like you have to prescribe a cyclovir, prednisolone. If the child has presented within 72 hours, you need to prescribe for five to seven days. Okay. Physiotherapy is important. Yeah. Monthly follow up, you need to do a GP follow up until the signs and symptoms are resolved. Usually, 95% case, they resolve by one year. If the facial palsy does not improve within four weeks, then you have to arrange cranial imaging. Okay. These are things. I hope uh, both videos uh, were clear and useful for you guys. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Okay. So let us do communication. Who's going to do the communication here?